Hello! Yay, a new chapter! And quite an interesting one. At the popular level too. The Battle of the Sexes. And don't despair, just a few more chapters left. Some of them with views opposite to Dawkins' gene theory of selection. It will soon be over. I want it to be over too, to be able to make personal videos. For this video I suspect there will be some arguing in the comment section. Battle of the Sexes Women are from Venus and men are from Mars. While numerous intellectuals have made efforts to argue that gender differences in humans are the result of social conditioning, differences in behavior between the sexes persist throughout the animal kingdom. While the human nature slash nurture debate is long and controversial, it seems unrealistic to propose that the differences between male and female behavior observed in so many different species is the result of socialization. I would argue that it is unrealistic to propose this for humans as well, but that's another story. The essential reason for these differences is that, at least in most sexually reproducing species, males and females have a very different priorities. The cost to a male of reproducing is small. He merely sheds a few million sperm. Given that the cost is small, it is obviously not worth the male expending much effort in caring for the offspring. Sure, the offspring may die as a result of his neglect, but he can always go off and find another female. He hasn't wasted much time and effort either way. In fact, his best policy may be to have as many offspring as possible by as many different females as possible, maximizing his chances of success for a minimal expenditure of effort. For females, however, the cost of reproduction is much larger. For a start, an egg is a much bigger investment than sperm, using up more resources and energy. In those species that incubate the fertilized egg internally, like mammals, the female also bears the mammoth cost of pregnancy. She cannot simply abandon her new offspring and go and have more. She has already invested too much time and energy in the production of the child simply to walk away. Thus, while we may not expect males to be particularly choosy about who they mate with, the female will want to ensure that she finds the right male. In particular, she will want to choose one who won't do a runner and who can be relied upon to help raise the children. Remember that from the gene's point of view, there is no reason for the male to help the female per se, or vice versa. They simply need each other to reproduce. Hence the famous, in inverted commas, battle of the sexes. In many species, however, both parents help care for the young. How are the females managing to coerce the males into this caring role, given that they would usually be far better off finding new mates? The answer is that females do have a large amount of power over males. They can refuse to mate with a male until he has, in inverted commas, proved his worth. If all females in inverted commas screen prospective mates in this way, a promiscuous male may find himself without a mate at all, and his genes will perish. Hence the lengthy, costly, and sometimes downright bizarre courtship rituals of which TV nature documentaries are so fond. Males are forced to undergo some sort of performance, intended to demonstrate their commitment to the female before mating can begin. This performance may involve challenges which demonstrate the male's ability to be a good parent, such as feats of strength or the provision of food for the female, in brackets, taking her out to dinner, as it were, close the brackets. Their content need not reflect actual ability, however. It is sufficient that they simply involve the male spending a great deal of time, as this is a, in inverted commas, cost in reproduction. A male who has had to spend ages wooing a female is unlikely then to desert her, if he knows that he will have to start all over again with any other female. Of course, this strategy is only successful if there aren't a large number of females who are prepared to forego the courtship ritual and mate immediately. As with our population of tit for tatists, there will always be a small number of cheats on each side there will be females who risk being deserted by not bothering with courtship and there will be males who are unfaithful. The risky females do all right as long as most males are faithful. 
they will only rarely be exploited by promiscuous males. The unfaithful males do all right as long as there are a few females who do not bother putting them to the test. This is an oversimplification and the exact details will, of course, depend on the risks, benefits and costs involved. The point is that the extravagant displays and rituals seen in nature can be explained in terms of each individual acting selfishly, or rather in accordance with his or her selfish genes. Interestingly, while in most animal species it is the males that have brightly colored appendages, feathers and so forth, in humans the roles seem to be reversed. It is women that wear the intricate garments and makeup, while the men all wear suspiciously similar suits. Whether or not this gives weight to the, in inverted commas, gender from social conditioning argument is a matter for debate, but together with other oddities in humans, in inverted commas, battle of the sexes, it led Dawkins to write the quotation with which I started this book. And that was a quotation. Man's way of life is largely determined by culture rather than by genes. Close the quotation. Thank you for listening. Bye.